This is a tutorial on how to set up a nonlinear model predictive controller. In this case, it's going to be for a uh, CSTR system. This is a continuously stirred tank reactor. We're going to be manipulating the cooling temperature and trying to control the outlet temperature. We'll also have a modification here to also control the outlet concentration. So we can control two things, uh, manipulating one. Okay, here is the, uh, okay, we're, what we're going to do is, um, if you want to download and file, follow along on these uh, with these files, just come to the Dynamic Optimization course website. It's apmodern.com slash do. And then go down to the very bottom. You'll go down to nonlinear control. And then this is going to be the uh, third example here. We started off with a proportional integral derivative controller, a linear model predictive controller, and then this final one is going to be the nonlinear model predictive controller in Python. You can also download the uh, Simulink versions as well down below. Okay, so with that, let's uh, get going. If you download that, we're going to be, be developing the uh, one app application. The two apps is where you have a separate simulator and a controller. In the one app, we just assume that the control uh, model and the simulator model are one and the same. And so we just create one application. We're going to start off with our model. First of all, this is going to be the same for both uh, either the one app or the two app. Uh, we're going to start off with a model uh, designation with some parameters. We're going to have a, uh, this isn't a PID set point, this is just a uh, set point for the controller. Um, manipulated variables, we have the cooling temperature, and we're going to start that off at 280. Parameters, we have a volumetric flow rate coming into the reactor. We have a volume of the CSTR and a density of the A or B mixture, so we assume that A and B both have the same density. Heat capacity is there. This is the heat of reaction. And then we're going to have the activation energy divided by R. We're just going to lump those into one value, 8,750. We also have a pre-exponential factor. And then we're also going to have an overall heat transfer coefficient. We're combining the, the U and the A terms there, uh, 5 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, feed concentration is 1. We're not going to be changing that, but you could. Uh, if you had the ability to change the feed concentration, the feed temperature is 350 degrees, and then we'll end the parameters. Those are going to be all the parameters we have for application. Variables, we have some differential states, just two. Concentration, we're going to start that off at 0.9. We're going to say it's greater than 0 and less than 1. Okay, our feed concentration is going to be 1. This is the concentration of A. It's going to be converted into B. Okay, we also have the temperature. We're going to say that's initially 305. And we say it's greater than 0 and less than 2,000. Hopefully we don't get above about 400 degrees, which would be uh, could lead to runaway. Okay, we have some intermediates here. This is our uh, K value. Our, uh, it's going to be our uh, pre-exponential factor times the exponent of E over RT. Okay, that's just standard Arrhenius form for these reactions. And then we have the rate which is just this uh, rate constant K times concentration, and that's going to be greater than zero. Okay, that's done. We're done with some intermediates. Those are just some temporary calculations that we're going to be feeding into these equations. Note that the dollar sign equals the time differential. Okay, so for dollar sign X, it would be dx dt. So we're going to do, first of all, a mole balance for species A. And so we're going to have the volume times the derivative of the concentration. If the volume were also changing, we'd have the derivative of the volume times the concentration added to that, just as we do the chain rule. Okay, but we assume that the volume doesn't change. We have the flow times our difference between the feed concentration and the outlet concentration. So it's going to be in minus out for the number of moles. And then minus the reaction rate of A. Okay, we have an energy balance as well. We have the density, heat capacity times the volume, times the temperature, that is the change in enthalpy with respect to time, that whole term lumped together, but the density, heat capacity, and volume are all constants, so they come out of the derivative. Okay, we have the flow times the density times the heat capacity times the inlet minus outlet temperatures. And then if you want to continue on to the next line, you can use this ampersand just to wrap it around. And then we have the heat of reaction, it's going to be because uh, we convert A to B, it's going to be exothermic. And then we also have the heat loss due to the cooling jacket. So we have the overall heat transfer times the cooling temperature minus the reactor temperature. 
So there's the end of our equation, it's the end of our model. I'm gonna create another uh, plot here, okay, that's just gonna put set point temperature and cooling temperature all in the same plot. We can just look at that as we're going. You can ignore the rest of this, I just added it in. It's a just creates a nice uh, graphic for our reactor if you wanna see it heating up or cooling down with different temperatures, okay? So you, you can ignore that, the dash.htm. Um, okay, so let's go on to our next one that we need to build, which is gonna be our uh, time here. This is going to be uh, our time horizon for our controller. We have zero, I'm gonna have 0 0.05 minutes, okay, and then 0 0.1 and then go all the way up to one. You can have those unequally spaced. Okay, let me close that. And I'll save changes. You can click save. Do you want to replace it? Yes. And then keep it in the CSV format. Just click yes there. Okay, let's go build our script now that's gonna run all of this. Now that we have our model and our data file, we're just gonna import APM. We're gonna select the server. We're gonna name the application. This, in this case, I'll just name it NMPC. I'll clear the previous application, if there is any. Uh, I'll load the model file and then load the data file. We'll classify some of our variables. We have manipulated variables that are cooling temperature, concentration, and temperature are controlled variables, so CVs. Those are the ones we're gonna be trying to drive to a target. The cooling temperature is the one that we can manipulate or change to be able to maintain a set point for the temperature or concentration. We have some options. We want to have, uh, I put nodes equals three. These are the orthogonal collocation nodes. Uh, we also have a history horizon. That's just for web viewers. See how many points in the past we want to keep displaying. Uh, web plot frequency, I change that to three, so it'll update my web plots every three seconds. And then I change my manipulated variable type to zero, which is a zero order hold. By default, it is one, which is a linear interpolation uh, between uh, points. Okay, bounds, I just put uh, upper and lower bounds on my cooling temperature. And then uh, I also want my cooling temperature to be on, so status on. That means uh, the controller can adjust it. If you have that off, then it won't do anything to the cooling temperature. Dmax is 10, it can only change it every uh, 10, every 0 0.05 minutes. Okay, so just a limit on how much the manipulated variable can move. I'm not gonna be measuring my cooling temperature, so my feedback status is off. For my temperature, my status is on, so that means I'm gonna measure it. My, or sorry, my, I wanna control it, but uh, F status is zero, so I'm not uh, measuring it. Um, then, uh, because I don't have a separate application, now if you use the two apps one, you would uh, measure it and input the measurement from the other application for temperature, but in this case, I assume that I don't have any measurements for my temperature or my concentration. My tau is gonna be how fast I want it to reach a new set point. My trajectory initialization, that just means uh, option two is to follow a reference trajectory. And then I also have a weight set point high and low of 10, meaning that's the priority relative to the concentration. We're also gonna see that status is one, F status zero for concentration. TR init is zero, that just means a zero order hold or a, a dead band. Or not a zero or hold, just a, a dead band, so it doesn't have a reference trajectory. Uh, set point high and low. I want to try to keep it between 0.2 and zero. Um, and then I have a weight set point high and, and low of 10 uh, as well for that. Now, um, I should have changed these to temperature right here. But um, by default, oh, we'll just see what the default values are there. Okay, so uh, I have, first of all, I'm going to initialize it with a steady state simulation. I just want to use I mode one and I'll solve it. So that gives me just a steady state values for my reactor. I'm gonna switch back to dynamic optimization. Okay, which is I mode six. And then I'll initialize some values. This is just for my loop here. And there's my loop, my ISIM range 201. We're gonna go 201 cycles. And then we'll have some if statements here. On cycle two, I'll change the TR knit to one. Uh, so don't recenter a reference trajectory each cycle, but still use a reference trajectory. That's just a minor thing. Um, okay, then uh, set, uh, change the set point for the temperature. So after 10 cycles, I'm gonna change it to 330. And then at 50 cycles, I'm gonna change it to 370. So we're gonna go up. Uh, and then at 150, we want to control the concentration. So I'm gonna put a cost on the concentration. So I'm gonna try to minimize it. Um, and then uh, my delta equals uh, 20, so I'm gonna widen 
the temperature set point. So you can see that I input the temperature set points, and so I have plus or minus 20. So I'm going to be controlling the concentration, and the temperature is going to be widened. Okay, then here's my solve. So every loop I'm going to solve the model predictive controller, and it's going to go on to the next loop. Okay, then I'm going to read the reactor temperature and concentration. This is just for storing them for later. And then I'm going to print them out. Um, and uh, okay, and then increment the time. And then I want to open a web viewer at the very end. If uh, put that in there as ISIM1, so it's going to open up a web viewer um, on the first cycle. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run module, and then let's just see how this. Uh, how this does. Okay, so it's going to take, I'm in Amsterdam right now, so uh, let's just see how long this takes with the internet connection. And, um, you know, if you want to speed it up, you can always use the local host. You can download the server um, for your own computer so you don't have to use an internet connection. But in this case, it's just using an internet connection. And let's go ahead and select this trend. So go ahead and select that when it comes up. And we just want to see the trend as it's going. There's our set point, which is at the top, and the blue, and then our temperature, and then you can see the green is our cooling temperature. And if you select CVs, you can come here. Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and select it right here, temperature.xml, or you can refresh that page. You can see the uh, the individual you know trajectory. If you select the uh, temperature, you can see what the temperature is trying to do. Okay, and if you go CVs, and let's do concentration. Here's our, so that was our reference trajectory. This is just our uh, dead band. So you can see that it's trying to control the concentration to right here, which is uh, upper limit of 0.2, lower limit of 0.1. Uh, but we're going to get that down there. Right now, the temperature is the higher priority. If we go back to CVs, we can see that in our table here. Um, let's look at weight set point high and low. So temperature is 20 on that, and concentration is 10 on the left. So temperature is higher priority right now. We're going to be trying to track that, and at a certain point we'll make that a wider um, range, and then just try to control, minimize concentration. Okay, so there's temperature again. Let's see how it's doing. Okay, so it's following that uh, trajectory. Um, if it ever turns orange on you, just click refresh. It just means it was trying to write the plot file at the same time the web browser is trying to read it. Um, it's just a flash thing, flash player thing uh, for uh, viewing the, the trends. Okay, let's go back to, I kind of want to see how it's doing uh, with respect to this, um, you know, all the values. Let's just watch all the values here. Okay, there you go, you got the orange thing. Just go ahead and select it again. And there it goes. So there's how it's uh, controlling right now. You can see the uh, the blue, the set point. But I think um, I raised the set point right here, and it's going to go up to a, a new set point. So I, I think SP is not being updated right now. So let's go. I, I don't think we built that into the application. Uh, let's just go back to temperature and see how it's doing. And uh, it looks like it's following it uh, very well. Okay, so you can just watch this as it goes. Um, you know, you can either watch this combined trend. Uh, you may want to go in and update the, the blue line, the set point, have that updated every cycle. I don't have it updated right now. It's just using the default value. And there's temperature right there. Okay, so you can see that one uh, tracking along. If you select the manipulated variables tab, the MBs tab at the top, um, you can see the configuration parameters there. If you select cooling temperature, that little link there for cooling temperature, you can see you know, what cooling temperature is doing. This is the model predictive controller output. Okay, This is the optimal move plan that the cooling temperature is wanting to do uh, to be able to maintain, uh, be able to maintain that uh, reactor temperature. Okay, so uh, that's it for this nonlinear model predictive controller. You can see it running. Uh, it takes less than 0.1 seconds per cycle. I think it's just some network overhead communication uh, is the reason why it's running a little bit slower there. Okay, but you can go ahead and close that out if you'd like to. And uh, okay, so that's it for, for this. This is our nonlinear model predictive controller in Python.